instrument, you big frump. I say never force a child to do anything, you big clod. Lily? Yes, dear? What do you say? I say... I say I'm not sure. There. That makes it two against one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where do you get two? Myself? And Mr. Gateman, my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Having Eddie try for the school orchestra was his suggestion. And when Mr. Gateman makes a suggestion, Herman obeys it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Grandpa, the argument is over. Now blow out your fingers. <laughs> Does this case contain a musical instrument? He did it, he did it, he did it, he did it. <laughs> Out of all the boys at his school, my son made the school orchestra. Congratulations, Herman. Oh, a trumpet. Eddie, let's hear you play something on it, son. Eddie, did you request the trumpet, or did your teacher assign it? He assigned it. I requested a triangle. <laughs> about the clinkers. <laughs> this is just the beginning. That's just what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Mr. Gateman said to me down at the parlor today? I give up. He said, Munster, after two weeks of practice, how does little Edward like his musical instrument? Well, that ain't exactly the Gettysburg address. <laughs> Herman, what did you say to Mr. Gateman? I told him that Eddie loves his trumpet, that he was born for the horn. <laughs> right, son? May I please be excused before you finish your dessert? Oh, uh, here, Eddie. Uh, let me peel you a pit. No, thanks. I'm full. There's a movie called Captain Blood on television. Oh, good. Very well, then, dear. Run along. Uh, one second, son. Did you finish your homework? Yes, sir. <laughs> Did you practice your trumpet? No, but I'll practice during commercials. I promise. <laughs> 
practice? No, you won't, Edward. You'll practice right now before you turn on the set. Well, go in there, son, and limber up the old lip. That's not that I have to practice every day. Please do not mumble about me behind my back, unless you do it to my face. Don't you think we may be pushing the child too hard? Well, in a field in which he may have no talent. He's got it. With all due respect, making me practice today is a dirty, rotten jip. Why? Because today is Sunday, and Sunday is the day of rest. Okay. Um, I'll make a deal with you. On the day of rest, you practice sitting down. <laughs> Thanks. there was a way I could learn to play by magic. There isn't. <laughs> now let me see if I can remember this, Igor. I got it. Here we are. <laughs> uh, three strands of Leonard Bernstein's favorite sauerkraut. <laughs> A glass of water from the beautiful Blue Danube. <laughs> <laughs> and one chop photograph of Ludwig von Beethoven. <laughs> Steiner beer from the Wittenpoof song. <laughs> and uh, a bucket of bilge water from the HMS Pinafore. <laughs> Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Igor, I know. It's enough to drive a, a bat bat. <laughs> Perch. Perch. Hi, Grandpa. How are you? <laughs> well, uh, uh, what have we here? We have a Sunday treat. <laughs> uh, Marilyn. When an old man asks you a question, it's polite to answer him. It's a sun... Oh. It's a Sunday treat. I made a fresh batch of sour lemonade, and Aunt Lily made these gorgeous cookies. Ooh, well... <laughs> yeah, mummy? <laughs> Scorpion? <laughs> and... <laughs> A dinosaur. <laughs> it's not as good as having the real thing. But I guess it'll have to do. You bring these in, and I'll carry in the lemonade. All right. <laughs> Herman, Lily, Marilyn, Grandpa, and Eddie. Fresh ice cold lemonade. Ice cold lemonade here. 
<laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> oh, thank you, Grandpa. Harold. That lemonade's wonderful. <laughs> Herman? Um, uh, you first. Age before beauty. <laughs> now, let me see. Which one shall I take? Herman, it's polite to take the one closest to you. Don't you have any manners, you stupid clod? Joy. <laughs> Eddie? Thanks, Grandpa. I'm thirsty. Mmm. These spider cookies are good. <laughs> you know, I've been just wondering. <laughs> I'm gonna have Mr. Gateman come over and hear Eddie tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? I sure hope I can whip up another batch of time. What did you say, Grandpa? Nothing, nothing. I, I was just talking to myself. <laughs> what a night it will be. <laughs> Is uh, everything going smoothly? <laughs> Mr. Gateman's very fussy, you know. Down at the parlor, he even insists that the shoes be shined. <laughs> Herman, everything is going fine. Relax. No, I'm not going to relax until later. When I hear the words, Munster, your son is a musical genius, and I'm going to use my influence to arrange his first concert. <laughs> uh, what's on tonight's menu? Aha. Iguana soup, salamander salad with centipede dressing, oh. and rolled hyena foot roast. Oh, goody. That's just what Mr. Gaten likes. <laughs> Nothing fancy, just plain home cooking. <laughs> Get back in there. You're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, potions for the fine arts, such as painting, sculpture, music, and bowling. <laughs> they must be frequently repeated in order to remain effective. <laughs> Caution. Always use the same formula. If not, therein lies disaster. <laughs> Hi, Grandpa. What's cooking? <laughs> Show some respect for tonight's guest of honor. Why don't you go upstairs and change your socks? I already did. Good. Then go upstairs and rehearse your groveling. Hi, Igor. Hi, Igor. Grandpa. Igor snubbed me. He can't hear you. He's wearing earmuffs. Why? Search me. Who am I to tell a bat how to dress? Now, let me see now if I can remember this. Now, was it Beethoven's sauerkraut and Bernstein's photograph or was it uh, Bernstein's sauerkraut and Beethoven's photograph? And the first man said, the dog can't talk. The mouse is a ventriloquist. <laughs> That'll do, Munster. 
don't overdo it. Uh, Mr. Gateman, I think we can conservatively say, sir, that you have the best sense of humor in the United States. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gateman, would you care for some more pie? Mrs. M, being that I'm in a gay party mood, I would love some. <laughs> Isn't Mrs. M a good cook? Indeed she is. Fit for a king, to coin a phrase. <laughs> and Mr. G is a good eater. <laughs> or as we say down at the parlor, he's one guy who really knows how to put it away. <laughs> my sense of humor does not include jokes at my expense. <laughs> oh, uh, sir, uh, shall I cut it for you, sir? No, and stop begging just because you carved my iguana. <laughs> uh, Count Dracula. It was something from some garden, chicken soup from Liberace. Grandpa, our guest is speaking to you. Uh, yes, young man? You've been as quiet as a customer all evening. Shot. Where's little Edward? Eddie's in the living room, getting ready to play for us. Then we mustn't keep him in suspense. Let's go inside and start the concert. <laughs> hey, hey, look at those interesting patterns the candlelight makes on the ceiling there. <laughs> well, that's enough, uh, folks. Hey, Eddie, you forgot your mail. Monster, put me down. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know you have to have your milk. Go ahead, drink it down like a good boy. That's it, good boy. <laughs> would you like me to slip off your shoesies? No. But I would like your assurance that the music will be confined either to semi-classical or classical. I detest these new sounds like the Black Bottom and the Lambeth Walk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce my son, the genius, <laughs> Master Edward Wolfgang Munster, who will now play a selection from the ever-popular Carnival in Venice. Just two words for you. Uh, I'm insulted? No, you're fired. <laughs> oh, but, dear. Oh. Edward, Edward, why did you play that, that, that jazz instead of the ever popular Carnival in Venice? It beats me, Daddy O. That man, something just came over me like. <laughs> what? <laughs> It was a mistake anyone could make. <laughs> Grandpa, that's not true. Marilyn's right. Look, it's a mistake only you could make. That's right. Go ahead. Go right ahead and pick on me. <laughs> Where were the complaints after my first potion? Well, we didn't even know it existed. If we had, do you think we would have let you give it to Eddie? We don't even let you help him with his homework. <laughs> Speaking of homework... When I asked Eddie to come to breakfast or he'd be late for school, he told me he isn't going to school. Well, why not? His exact words were, mommy o education is Squaresville. <laughs> is that so? Huh. Well, I'm going to give him some exact words of my own. Lily? According to my mathematical calculations, the unpleasant side effects of my potion on Eddie's personality will wear off shortly. How short is shortly? 
any time between the next two minutes and six months. <laughs> of uh, your uh, company. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to come up and have a little father to sunny old chatty -o. Groovy. <laughs> uh, say, listen, man, uh, why don't we uh, take a seat in your pad here and take a load spill off our feet? <laughs> Your mommy o uh, tells me, like, uh, you don't want to go to school. You know it, man. <laughs> like, um, my motto is, don't be a high school dropout. Drop out in grammar school. <laughs> man, that's a real groovy idea, but, uh, like, uh, what do you plan to do instead? Like? Like, uh, my horn and I are going to jet to Vegas and blast our way into a lounge act. Oh, man, that idea is 23 skidoo, but uh, don't you have to be 16sville to get a work permit? Gosh, Pop, I never thought of that. Eddie, sir, you called me Pop, and, and you spoke in English. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy-o. I don't dig what flipped me. But you loan me the bread for the plane fare, and I'll repay you as soon as possible. Honest, Pop. Uh, 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 there, Eddie, you did it again. Son, son, the potion is wearing off. <laughs> uh, you all right? Yeah, Pop, I guess so. Feels like something's going on inside my brain. Something is. And now let's see if the cure is complete. Uh, play something. Welcome home. You're my own little boy again. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Gateman. Good evening, Master. I'm here to give you back your job. Oh. Then you discovered, sir, that the parlor can't run without me? No, as a matter of fact, I discovered the parlor runs better without you, but I fired you unjustly, so I'm letting you come back. Mr. Gateman, if I could only find words, sir, to express my humble gratitude. <laughs> to offer the entire Munster family an apology. My behavior the other evening was inexcusably rude. Well, you know, now that you mention it, I'd like... Grandpa, shush. Especially for a man famous for his sense of humor. Please accept my apologies. Oh, of course. And please give me a second chance to hear little Edward play his trumpet. But... Uh, 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 second chance? Oh, Mr. Beatman, I think... Wait, 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 just a minute. Uh, girls? Uh, girls. Uh, uh, since uh, Mr. Gateman is uh, Herman's boss, I uh, do think we should leave the decision to a uh, uh, good old uh, Hermie boy. Uh, my decision? <coughs> well, let me see. Uh, I think that after the way Mr. Gateman has treated me for years... <laughs> If he wants to hear my son play the trumpet, why not? <laughs> Should I let him have Carnival in Venice, Pop? Yes, Eddie. Let him have it. <laughs> 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 